Welcome to our welding space cast, where the universe goes to find out about blueprint reading. <laughs> All right, guys, today we're working on section one for the mathematics and metrics, okay? So I'm just going to do a bit, a quick overview of what we have. And if you guys have any questions on this, pretty much we've gone over this a lot. But the only thing is, is that some of this, the way they ask the questions is just kind of odd. Okay, so if you guys are going to use the answer sheet, that's fine. If you write it down and give me pictures, that's fine as well. However you'd like to do it, whatever makes it easy, okay? All right, so the top is usually an example. The center is going to be where they ask the question, and the bottom is usually where you put your answer, okay? So this box is divided into four equal parts, and each part equals one-fourth of the block. So Four blocks, one fourth, huh? Two parts of the block equal one half. And if we multiply the top and bottom numbers of a fraction by the same number, it doesn't change things. Okay, so one half by two is still two fourths or one half. Okay, so then it says, what fraction is represented by each part of the block? How much is one block? Well, how many blocks do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight blocks. So each block is one eighth. How many parts are required to represent half of the block? Well, half would be four. How many are one fourth? You guys know it? Okay, I'll let you figure it out. Okie dokie, distances. I'm not sure how many of you guys are good at this, but this really helps out a lot, okay? They're breaking down one inch. This is one inch. Half of one inch is half and half. There are four fourths, one, two, three, four, or eight eighths, or 16 sixteenths, or 32 32s, or 64 64s. All right, so there are how many eighths in the whole? There are how many fourths in one half? Four sixteenths are equal to how many eighths? A whole divided in 30 seconds, one thirty second contains how many sixteenths? One fourth is how many times larger than one eighth? Okay, one half is how many times larger than one eighth? Pretty simple, guys. I think you guys should be able to do this. All right, now we're going to look at this a little bit differently. Now, this tells us about the lines. This first line is a 64th line. This one here is a 32nd. This longer one here is a 16th. And this one is an 8th. And we're talking about 1 inch. Okay. And this is our half. And this is our quarter. So you can see the lines get larger as we go. So what is the length of the lines in the fractions of an inch? Okay, so it's pointing here, pointing here, pointing here. Okay. Proper fractions and improper fractions. Okay, a proper fraction means that the numerator, the top number, is smaller than the denominator, the bottom. Okay. If it's improper, the top number is larger than the bottom number. So 9 eighths is proper or improper because what? 15 16 is improper or proper because? And 17 16 is proper or improper because of? Okay, now it says simplify, uh, simplification of improper fractions. So what you really do is you take this, so let's see, 9 eighths, and we want to turn it into an improper fraction. Well, hmm, let's see how they do this. Well, this doesn't seem very easy. So 9 eighths, and we want to pick it to a proper fraction. So 9, or excuse me, 8 goes into 9 how many times? Once. 9 minus 8 is 1. And then I'm going to put the, the bottom number back on there, 8. How many times does 16 go into 17? 1. 17 minus 16 is 1. And I'm going to put the 16th on the bottom. 
How many times does 3 go into 4? Once. 4 minus 3 is? 1. The bottom number is? 3. Okay, now improper to proper. Here's the same thing. 16 goes into 21. How many times? 21 minus 16, that's going to be my top number. 16 is going to be on the bottom. Okay. How many times does 2 go into 41? You're going to take that number and minus it from 41, and the 2 is going to be on the bottom. How many times does 32 go into 69? You're going to take that number and minus it from 69. That's going to be your top number, and the bottom number is going to be 32. All right, so adding and subtracting. So we know that the denominators must be the same in order to add or subtract. Okay, so what do we have to do for this first one? The first one means that we have to make them the same. So what would be my common denominator? My common denominator here is 8. So if 8 is my common denominator, what do I have to do to 4 to get to 8? Well, I must multiply it in order to get it to 8. So 4 times 2 is 8. Whatever I do to the bottom, I must do to the top. So 2 times 1 is 2. So it would be 2 eighths plus 7 eighths. What would be? 9 eighths, which means I also have to simplify it. So how many times does 8 go into 9? So 9 minus 8 is 1. So it would be 1 and 1 eighth. Okay, I'll let you do the other one. I'm just going to do a quick review on this. Pretty much same thing, add the fractions and simplify. And adding and uh, subtracting with whole numbers. Okay, always do your fraction first. So what's my common denominator here? My common denominator here is 32. 16 times two is 32, so that would be seven times two and two times uh, one times two. So seven times two is 14, so 14 16 plus, excuse me, 14 30 seconds plus 2 30 seconds plus 21 30 seconds. And then I'm going to add my whole numbers and I'm going to simplify. Same thing. Ah, subtraction. We all love them. So if we're going to add or subtract, what must we do? We must make the denominators the same. The downstairs are the same. Personally, I don't like my numbers like this. I'll make them like this, um, sideways. Um, it makes it a little bit easier for me to keep things straight. So if you have to, you can do that. That's fine. Okay, same kind of things. Remember, subtract your fractions first before you do this, okay? So let's do this first one. So we know that our common, denominator, our common denominator is 32. So in order to get 16 to 32, we multiply by 2, right? So 22, 30 seconds, minus 5, 30 seconds, okay? And then minus 9 minus 4. Okie dokie. Now these ones are subtracting whole numbers with borrowing. Hmm, well, let me get my calculator out. Okay, so how many times does uh, 64, uh, actually we need to know what is our common denominator. Our common denominator here is 64, right? So how many times does 16 go into 64 to make us a common denominator? Well, let's see here. So 64 divided by 16 is... 4. So 4 times uh, 3. Jesus, where did I go? Okay, so 12. That can't be right. Okay, that's right. Okay, so that would be 4 times 3 is 12. Okay, so 12 64 minus 57 64. That doesn't work, does it? How do we take that 1 from the 5? 
and move it over to fractional terms. So we'll borrow from the five, that makes this a four, okay? Now, I have 64 over 64, that's one, plus 12. So I have 64 plus 12, that is 76 over 64, minus 57 over 64, or minus 57, that would be 1964, and then this would be 4 minus 2 would be 2. So it would be 2 and 1964. Does that make sense, guys? All right, onwards. I'm pretty sure you guys understand how to do this, but I want to make sure that you do understand it well. So um, remember when we add decimals to always keep the decimal points um, the same. If I have something like this, I'm going to put placeholders with zeros to make sure that I'm not going over where it doesn't need to be going over. All right, same thing, subtracting. You guys got it. Converting fractions to decimals, okay? So we can do this on the calculator or you guys can do it longhand, I don't care. Two divided by one, right? Eight goes into one, how many times? Just like this. So what do we have here? So this would be 64 divided by 19, 16 divided by 11, or maybe no, 11 divided by 64, excuse me. Now, how do I make these decimals to fractions? Well, this is the denominator can be any fraction of an inch, okay? So to make this a lot easier, so the example they give is, let, let's try this one. Let's make it sixteenths, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to go 0 0.343 times 16, okay? And we're going to go to the nearest whole number. So uh, the number I get is 5.488. We're going to round it to the nearest whole number, which would be 5, which means this would be 5 sixteenths. That's it, okay? So here they're asking, I would like you to make this into 30 seconds. So this would be 0 0.531 times 32 and 0 0.843 times 16, okay? All right, here we go, keep on going. Do, 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 do. Same thing here, you guys got it. Uh, this one's kind of interesting the way this works and what they want you to do. Ultimately, they want you to find out what is closest to what fraction of an inch? Seems kind of weird, right? Okay, so here it is. It says, I want to know what fraction of an inch this is, or what is it closest to? Okay, so 0 0.0562. So we want to locate the nearest decimals of 0 0.562 on the chart, because if you notice, 0 0.0562 isn't on the chart, but 0469, it's right here, and that's 3 64ths, and 0625, which is a 16th. Now we need to know, is it closer to the 16th or is it closest to 3 64ths? So what we do is take this number and we're gonna minus this number, and then we're gonna take this number and minus this number, and the smaller the difference means it is closer to 1 16th, there's a smaller difference here, than it is to 3 64ths. So they want you to find these numbers and see what would be the closest number to it? So what fraction would be closer? Okay, that's how you would use a chart like that. All right, adding and subtracting fractions and decimals. Let me tell you, you wanna make them go to all the same unit. We either want them all fractions or we want them all decimals, okay? So here, they give fractions. So I would probably put this into a fraction or we put them all into decimals and then add or subtract. The metric system. It's easy guys, you guys know how to do this, except they're asking you to do it uh, first with money and then with meters. Make sure everything is in the same unit before you add or subtract. So they give you a sample, a comparison. A dollar is like a meter. A dime is like a decimeter, a centimeter is like a penny, and one millicent 
is one millimeter. Makes sense? Okay, so they want you to, they have dollars here, and they want you to have it in dimes. They have dollars here, they want you to put it in dimes. So we need to do what? I have dollars and I need dimes, right? Am I taking away a zero, adding a zero? What am I doing? Okay, same kind of thing. Same thing, dollars to dimes. Meters to decimeters, okay? Am I adding a zero or taking a zero away? Okay, change your unit and then add or subtract. Here's your comparisons, okay? So they want to know one foot equals how many inches and one decimeter equals how many centimeters, on and on and on. So they would like you to answer the questions. And here's your comparisons. Okay, so fill in the blank. One decimeter equals how many meters? Ten centimeters equals how many decimeters? And ten millimeters equals how many centimeters? And it's kind of, the answer is kind of funny when you get it. All right, and then they want you to circle it. If you guys are writing this down on another paper, page, you're going to say one meter is longer or shorter on on these ones, okay? All right, here it is. Here is how it can be broken down. So four decimeters is greater than one foot. Five decimeters is greater than uh, 18 inches. So we can look at this. Hmm, how big is it? And it says one decimeter is one tenth of a meter or one third of a yard. And one inch is one thirty-sixth of a yard. Hmm. Okay, so one centimeter is one one hundredth of a meter. A decimeter is one tenth of a meter. And ten centimeters is one decimeter. So, same thing. Answer the question. All right, same thing. Here we go. Conversions. So, uh, 2,600 millimeters is how many centimeters or how many meters? And then, of course, you guys know um, how to go from English to metric and metri metri uh, metric to English. And they give you guys the uh, correct conversion factors here. So if I want to go from centimeters to inches, I'm going to use what? Centimeters to inches divide by 2.54. If I'm going from meters to yards, meters to yards, multiply by 1.1. Millimeters to inches, well, millimeters to inches, divide by 25.4. Okay, pretty simple stuff, guys. All right, here's your other conversion factors. There they are. All right, adding and subtracting. Pay attention to the units. If the units are not the same, you'll have a problem. So millimeters and centimeters, millimeter, millimeter, centimeters, millimeters, meters. Make sure you pay attention to what they're asking for. Change them over and then do the uh, problem. Oh, and of course, decimal and millimeter equivalents. Okay. Now, of course, guys, if you're confused, you don't understand this, I kind of went over this quickly. Please let me know. Please write a question, etc., etc., etc. All right, guys, as always, take care.